Hey guys, it's Joe, and today I thought I would bring back a thing I used to do, and that is the Tech Talk for Tuesday. And the reason I want to do that is because of a couple of things I've been dealing with over the last few days, and it all comes down to what the subject of today's video is, and that's maintenance. Maintenance, especially on computers, is extremely important. If you don't maintain it, and I don't just mean keeping bloatware off your computer, I mean physical maintenance of your components, you can severely damage, degrade, and destroy your computer. You don't want to do that. Computers are not cheap. For example, all the parts in Red Devil back here behind me, if you go to replace all those, that is going to be well over two grand. Especially if you try to upgrade them with the more current stuff. If you try to update that system, right now, you're going to spend 25 to 3 grand on it. And that's an annoying amount of money to spend, especially if you're forced to do it because you were an idiot and didn't take care of your equipment. I'm going to show you a couple of things today. We're going to look at a few things. Also, I'm filming this on the HD camcorder, whatever this is. So I have no idea how the video is going to look. We'll find out when we're done. Since I'm kind of off my foot for the next couple of days, I thought I would go ahead and do this. Besides, I need to take the 1070 apart and change the thermal compound, like I said in the last video, which you can see up here. So go ahead and click on that when you get a minute if you'd like to see why I even have a 1070 instead of the 1080 Ti. First thing, of course, that's different between my setup and most people's setup is that mine is on an open air Thermaltake P5 case. Love the case. Although the next build, I might go with the P3, which is smaller. But this P5 is perfect if I decide to put a water cooler on that CPU, which I intend to do. Where are you? There you are. For the most part, most cases are fully enclosed. Whether they have a side window or not, they're going to be enclosed so there's a big giant pocket in there where the air is circulating typically you have an intake fan on the front you have an exhaust fan on the back sometimes you have them on the top if you don't have one on the top don't cry about it it's just the way your case is but that encourages buildup of dust and dirt and detritus and things of that nature and most people don't even bother cleaning out that system. For most of the time, they own it. Most people will only clean it if they have to replace a failed component, which is circular because you usually have to replace a failed component because you didn't take care of your system. What made me make this video? Well, it's that graphics card, that 1070 that's in there. That is a Zotac 1070 Amp Edition, and I got it from a friend on partial trade for my 1080 Ti. It's a perfectly fine card, works fine, it just has an insane amount of coil wine. When I got this card, it wasn't filthy, it was in the package, it looked alright. However, there was a significant amount of dust that came out when I first tried to clean it. I saw there was some dust around the rim around the fan, so I figured just give it a quick blow out because I could see through most of the veins in the heatsink that runs across the top of the card. As soon as I started using the card, I heard the infamous coil wine. Coil wine is annoying and it does indicate that there's been some degradation to the components on the card. It's not life ending for the card but it is unfortunately going to be there for the rest of the card's life. The two ways you reduce that as I said in the previous video is to back down your overclock or reduce the temperatures on the card. That card ran at over 65 degrees Celsius under superposition. It was closing in on 70 degrees and spiked to 71, 72. I did some more testing last night. That is much too high for me. I know that these cards can run up to 85, 87 degrees Celsius, but why would you do that? I have a 7,000 RPM red line in my car. Doesn't mean I drive it around at 7,000 RPMs all day because that's going to hurt the vehicle. So yesterday, while I was uploading another video, I went ahead and took this thing apart in order to see how the thermal compound looked as well as how the heat sinks looked from the bottom. 
while not terrible, I've seen much worse from stuff I've picked up at flea markets and whatnot. There was a significant amount of dust and stuff stuck to the PCB itself on top of the power phase delivery and all the rest of the chips and components on the board. So that could lead to heat buildup. Doesn't mean it's going to slow it down that much, but it can contribute. You add 1% to 100 different things, you have a 100% increase. You know what I'm saying? The other thing I noticed was the original thermal compound, which it had because I think it's what, a two year old card, two and a half year old card, it shouldn't be that bad. The thermal compound was quite dry, brittle and cracked. I could just flake it off with my fingernail. So obviously the next step is to replace the thermal compound with new thermal compound. I use Arctic Silver 5 and in fact, I need to redo the compound on my CPU because I used the Cooler Master Maker gel, whatever that stuff's called, and I'm not 100% happy with the results. So I'm gonna try it with Arctic 5 and see if that works any better. That being said, the card runs much cooler now. It probably only hit 60 once, so at least a 10 degree difference between the hottest temperature before and after cleaning, which is why it's extremely important to maintain your system. And it doesn't take a lot of time. In fact, I keep cans of duster around and pretty much every day, I just hit it up so that the dust doesn't have a chance to stick and build up. And again, my system is open, so it's a pain in the ass in terms of dust control because every component is exposed to the air. Now, I'm gonna show you this, but my system isn't that dirty my area doesn't get that dusty, but I do sometimes eat at my desk, so I get crumbs on things, and having a duster before that stuff sets makes a big difference. So you, you can see, kind of, high red lights, but there's lots of areas for dust to start sitting on things, you know, inside the edge of the fan shroud, on top of components, things like that, where you could have issues with dust buildup that cause the system to run like crap. And you don't want that to happen. You want it to stay as clean as possible so that it runs as good as possible. I did get my four pin auxiliary connector, so that was nice. I actually got it right after I finished uploading the other video. Yeah, now that I've increased the cooling capacity of the card, as far as I can without water cooling it, I will say that the wine has been slightly reduced. I should have taken video of it last night, but this thing wasn't charged, and I was using my phone to upload the other video that I shot in one take. So that's the lesson of the day. That's the important message. The more you know, rainbow star. You know what I mean. Clean your shit. Preventative maintenance. It's a very important thing when you're talking about electronics. It's important about anything, you know, your car, your house, whatever. But electronics especially, you have to take care of them. If you don't take care of them, they're gonna die. And replacement costs on parts are ridiculously expensive. So why? I know that having an open air case makes it easier for me to maintain the system. But even in an enclosed case, I would take the side panel off and just check it look at it, see if it needed to be blown out, see if it needed to be taken apart and redone. Most of the time when I buy something, especially graphics cards, I'll disassemble them as soon as I buy them and change the thermal compound. Even on ones that I've gotten from Micro Center that have been RTV'd and tested, I don't care. I don't like running the risk of somebody else overheating the component or somebody else not knowing what they're doing. Just because you work for a company doesn't mean you know what you're doing. If you watch some of my old videos when I ran a car dealership, you'll see that 90% of them idiots didn't know what the f*** they were doing. I do want to produce a video that's a little bit more in-depth with discrete graphics versus onboard graphics. Just because I want to, although this computer won't work for that because it doesn't have onboard graphics, but I have other computers that do. So that's about it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you would like to see another video, go ahead and click over here. If you haven't subscribed, click over here. If you'd like to become a Patreon, click up there. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And as always, talk to you later. It's going to be a bitch to edit because I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. 
no clue.